Amen. We are grateful to gather here on this Christmas Eve, aren't we? It's a great time to see all the snow outside. I mean, um, sorry, if you're listening online, you know it's not snowing here because we were in shorts this morning. Um, At least some of us were. And we don't have changing of colors of trees. We have changing of colors of license plates. But I do love this time of year. It's the best time of year we get to see people and family that come home for the holidays. And we are so grateful to see all the smiling faces and the joy. And we get to have all those wonderful conversations. Like, um, you do know that Christmas isn't really Jesus' birthday, right? Well, of course we do. We're not idiots. No, we know that Christmas isn't really, Jesus' birth really wasn't on December 25th. In fact, we have no idea when it was. Early Christians were celebrating it all times of the year. They would celebrate it in September and August and December and October, and we have no idea what month he was born. We have some clues. We know for one thing, it wasn't December. Because we know the, sh- the shepherds were out in the field at night. All right, so we know it wasn't during the rainy season when it's too cold and wet to be out in the field at night. So we do know that it wasn't December, but there's a lot of gap there. I mean, we're not anywhere from May to October, depending on how you translate the word field, Right? I mean, we know that it was, but we don't know when it was. We do know that he wasn't, it says there's no room for him in the main, in the inn, which we've come to understand that that doesn't mean there was no room for him at the Holiday Inn. It means that there was no room for him in the private housing of his family, and so they were staying in the more public area of the house. And when she went into labor, they said, we can't do this here with all the kids around. Let's go downstairs where we normally keep the animals, but they're all outside because it's, you know, that time when the sheep or the animals are outside in the fields at night. And, uh, and so they end the birth in the manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Because they would keep, in the culture of the time, they would keep their animals downstairs to provide heat for the from them to pr- provide warmth protection so we get to have all those fun conversations and and people say these things like it's some great surprise like they're going to really get us Make us not believe because it wasn't December 25th. It's all over the internet right now. If you don't believe me, just go to any social media account. Whether that be TikTok or Facebook or Instagram or... uh, Some of you are still rocking MySpace, I'm sure. Yeah, MySpace is a little too young for you guys. I know you... Uh, (laughs) But uh, we have these conversations, and we know that we've gathered together on December 25th because the people around the Christians were celebrating Sol uh, Sol Invictus. Sol Invictus means the, the, um, the undying sun. And it's the time of the year when we have our shortest day. And days become noticeably longer on December 25th. December 21st is your shortest day. And it slowly starts getting longer and longer. And you really start noticing the difference on December 25th. And so they would celebrate the sun and the harvest festival. And so what over time, over hundreds of years actually... Christians began to say, well, they're already celebrating this idea of the undying sun. Well, we too, and the sun, 
that didn't die, S-O-N, a son that didn't die. And so they started taking this pagan holiday this, and they started recommissioning it into a Christian holiday. And we've done that with mo- most of our holidays have been recommissioned. I mean, and that's okay. And when they recommission this holiday so that we begin to say, well, if we're going to celebrate one, we're going to pick one day to celebrate as a, as a body of believers across the known world. We're going to celebrate, pick one day to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Let's do it on December 25th. And so we celebrate December 25th, the birth of Jesus Christ, because we decided that on one day we're going to be celebrating a son who didn't die. He came to earth, God came to earth, became flesh. And how important it was that Jesus, that God became human. He became fully human. He was fully human and fully God in a way that we can't really understand because we can't do it. And it was so important that he became human because he relates to you and me. And he walked with us talked with us what a blessing that jesus became flesh on this holiday that we celebrate him going and becoming human which means you know that song you know no crying he made is a lie we know he was a baby and if the baby's not crying something's wrong those of you who've had kids you know this right We're happy he became, came to earth, became flesh. We're thrilled that he walked among us. And then we'll be teaching us and working with it and die for us on the cross, on a torture device, so that as a blood sacrifice, he will become the ultimate sacrifice so that we may have eternal life. That as our sins are thrust upon Him, His righteousness is thrown upon us. What a blessing. Matthew 1.18 says, now the birth of Jesus Christ occurred in this way. His mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So Joseph, her husband, being righteous and not wanting to disgrace her, intended to divorce her secretly. But as he was considering these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be a friend. Take Mary as your wife, for what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will give birth to a son, and you will call him Yeshua, Yeshus, um, Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this happened in order that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophets will be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin will become pregnant and will give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which translate God with us. And Joseph, when he woke up from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took his wife and did not have sexual relations until she gave birth to a son and called his name Emmanuel. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Born is God with us. Emmanuel. That comes from the book of Isaiah. There will be a virgin born, and her son will be called God with us. And I love that title, God with us, God who saves. 
Because he's still with us. He still saves us. He hasn't quit. He lives in heaven at his father, the father's right hand side, working as our intercessor, saying, I know him. I know her. My blood forgives them. And one who was given by Jesus is now moving around us even today. That is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what a blessing the gift of the Holy Spirit is, right? God working through us, around us, in us, that is a blessing. We pray to God by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the blood of Jesus Christ, to the Father. We are saved by the power of the Holy Spirit through the blood of Jesus Christ to the, by the Father. What a wonderful blessing it is. Amen? Amen? Jesus is still working today and we celebrate His birth because without His birth, there's no life. No life for Him that leads to His ultimate death and then resurrection into life and life but also no life for us it's through his death and burial and resurrection that we have eternal life to take away the punishment of our sins all those things that god said don't do or and we did anyways that's what sin is right when we miss the mark And we know we can't do it all on our own. We're going to miss the mark. There's no one that can do it by themselves. And that's okay. Because we have the blessing of Jesus Christ. And so we celebrate this time. And yes, we could get caught up in, well, is Jesus really born on December 25th or September 32nd or... um, Some of you caught that. (laughs) But if we get caught up in that, we sometimes forget the truth that He is the Savior. And we are His disciples. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and that's what the Bible calls us to do, it's shorthand. The Bible, if you go run a search online, it'll never, you'll never see it say, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's not in the scriptures. But what it does tell us to do is that we need to make him the king of our life. Walking in his path. Following his words and his commandments. Lord. And we need to accept and believe in Him that He came and died for us on the cross to take away the punishment of our sins so that if we believe in our hearts, the Bible says, right? Believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths, we will be saved. Savior. So Lord of our lives, that means we do what He tells us to do. We walk in, because we are saved, we walk in His path and we're going to do the things He wants us to do. We're going to go closer to Him. We're going to be His disciples, which means we're going to be walking so close to Him that his, the, the dust of His feet is kicking up on our, our shoes. And we get to walk with Him. And what a blessing that is. Lord and Savior of our life. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. It's not because we like Santa Claus that much. It's not because we like giving gifts that much. Most of us rather give it, right? And then some of us like receiving it way too much. And some of you guys are spoiled. 
And it's not about any of that. It's about the ultimate gift, which Christ gave to us through his life, burial, death, and resurrection. What a blessing. So we celebrate Jesus Christ. So this holiday, we're going to remember the birth of Jesus Christ. And we're going to take up our candles. All of you should have received candles.